And I'm gonna do my snap because I've not got my clapper. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, my name is Sarah Payne and welcome to the last episode of Behind the Scenes, where we have been looking at the um, the individual episodes for The Great British Sewing Bee, and here we are. Final was last night, everything is finished, it's a wrap, and here we are to talk to you about it once more for the very last time this year. So let me just um, introduce you to everybody. As I said, I am Sarah Payne. We have um, Alistair. <laughs> We do have Alistair and, and Esme, obviously. So hello, Alistair. Thank you for joining us. We have Samantha from um, Just Bold Fabrics. Hello, darling. And then... Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> because this is the final, I am delighted to welcome our very, very special guest. So um, hello to uh, Charlotte Newland. So Charlotte, hello. can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here? I'm here because it's the sewing bee. And I'm, of course, obsessed with it. Um, I brought my little friend with me. No. I know. Um, so I was on series four in 2016. Um, and since then, uh, I've become a sewing teacher. I managed to give up my day job of being a scientific editor. And I now teach sewing all over the country, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, because you, you actually won. So that is your, that is your very classy trophy <laughs> so we're hoping you can give us some little insights oh, um and some secret little stuff. trade secrets um as we go through what happened last night so obviously last night was the final and the theme for the final was celebration so our first was a pattern challenge which was a bridesmaids um dress um with you know little sleeves and you had a sash and um delicate little buttons and stuff like that so Alistair what did you think of that first challenge that we we enjoyed last night it's funny how they introduced crim hasn't it <laughs> we discussed that last week didn't we I, I know we've got nothing to talk about now. we may as well just go home right. <laughs> <laughs> um well the examples, they really, really, really have to make sure those examples are the creme de la creme that they're critiquing on. Mm. That dress was, it really was all. The, the one thing I didn't understand, now, I'm a couturier, okay? And um, when you're doing those um, buttonhole finishes and you're doing that um, flap over thing, all of them put the lining and the outer yes. together, and then they decided to then create the little um, uh, welts inside yep. the thing. Now, that should disappear. You're, you're supposed to do one with the welts on the front, and then you're supposed to do another one without the welts on the back. Now, that's a skill, because that's about getting the facing and the front to perfectly match. Now, if they're talking about couture, that's how you do couture. That's not, so for everybody at home, that is not how we finish couture gowns at all. I just thought it was just, and I, again, they could have chosen, rather than oyster, they could have chosen a little bit, oh, a, a, a little bit more, something a little bit more fabulous for the final. Mm. I, I wasn't I wasn't a great fan of, of, of this particular joke. And also the um, the sort of like mutton um, tiny sleeves, yeah. they were so tight that uh, that pattern hadn't been executed properly. It was it was way too tight on there. If you'd actually put a little girl's arm in there, you would have seen her um, arm bulging out of the thing. It would be like a tennis ball sticking out. And you get this. Oh. It just it 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 wasn't my favourite. So, Sam, um, with that outfit, obviously, we had, let me just show you the images of the the three of them. So we had uh, Rebecca with the Duchess, um, with the Duchess silk, and we had the other two with taffeta. What did you think of those three sort of resulting outfits? Well, Rebecca's, what can I say? 
you'd have thought she'd have been flying on a plane with her bows, the grey bows sticking up all over the place. But then, of course, <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, it's all about time. They just seem to be under mega pressure. Um, and it came out as a result in their sewing. And I didn't really like any of the dresses. I thought they were all a mess, to be honest. And actually, Raf didn't didn't execute his properly at all. So, you know, but he did didn't come last. Sew the, didn't sew in the ditch, did he? No, no. But then neither did Serena, but she unpicked it. So, Charlotte, have you got a little bit of insight that you can give us about what it's actually like? to do a pattern challenge like that? Because obviously we sit here and we talk about it and we don't yeah. have to, we don't, we have never experienced, we do live TV, but you know, it's not the same as, as that. Can you give us a bit yeah. of an insight? Um, there's never enough time. If anything goes even remotely wrong, then that's it, it's over. You're never, you're never no. gonna get, you can't undo something that's and redo it very often. It's, it's really tricky. So it has to all go right the first time. Um, but it's interesting what you were saying, Alistair, about that buttonhole, because you're right, that is completely the wrong way to do it. And it looked horrible on the inside. But the other thing that you have to do is that they absolutely must follow the instructions in the pattern 100%. If they deviate from the instructions, then they lose marks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so they were obviously told to do them like that, which is a shame because it didn't look great. But then nobody, they didn't have nobody. to do it any other way. So it's all about time. It's all about time. Yeah, I did. I did notice how Patrick, when he was demonstrating how to do it, struggled himself. Did you notice yeah. there were a couple of pauses where he's like, and then you, turn it. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, bless you. You don't yeah, know what you're doing either. I did a <laughs> okay. hole in um, when I was on the B, and they didn't even show it. Do you remember every single garment you made? Oh yeah. It's all yeah. seared into my hind brain. Um, <laughs> I've got PTSD. Did you get to keep them? Yeah, yeah. They gave us, they gave them back to us after um, it had all been broadcast. Mm. We got them all delivered in a taxi the next day in a giant box. <laughs> can, I just, can I just ask a question? Because I'm so curious. When you were on the sewing bee. Well, did, did you always know what you were going to do a week before? Was the time to prep everything or were you just, you know? Only the pattern, only the um, made to measure. So we were given the briefs before we started. We were given the briefs for the first few weeks and we had time to practice. But then once filming starts, you don't have time to practice anymore because it's you're filming constantly. It's not once a week like they make it look. It's continuous, basically. Wow. Um, yeah. So you don't really have time to practice anything. So that's why a lot of them became unstuck, confused, didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And so it was real. It was real. It wasn't fixed. It was real, yeah. which is what I thought, Sarah and Alistair. I really thought, you know what? They, they've not practiced. They've not had time to do yeah. half of the things. Because you could tell, because I'm all into mindfulness and how you approach sewing. And I and all, and all I could see was constant breakdowns. Mm. Yeah, and it was kind of... But the thing is, there, there were skills that that I would have expected them to have practiced before they started, like at certain zips, I would practice a, um, a fly zip because that's bound to come up and you did, wouldn't need to do that in between. I would have sort of have those things set in yeah. my mind before we even started. But one thing they can't practice is the transformation challenge. So let me grab my picture for the, the second challenge, which this one, Ralph came first, Serena came second and Rebecca came third. But we had this pile of really bright and cheerful items here to make something that you would wear to a festival. So um, let's have a quick uh, rundown of that. So we've got this one here is Serena's. Then we've got the two piece here, which is Raf's. And then we've got um, Rebecca's outfit here. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to go back the other way now. So I'm going to start off with Charlotte. Which one was your favourite out of that? Obviously, we know that Raph won, but was that, did you agree or did you have a different favourite? Uh, I did agree because I, I thought they would, they would choose that one, but I preferred Serena's personally. I just thought That's it was cute. <laughs> yes, that one. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I like those trousers. Bizarrely, I, they were very clever. I feel I need to state I would never wear them, but I thought they were. 
Sam, what about like you? <laughs> I liked I liked Ralph's because yeah, I could see him in uh, Brazil, you know, dancing in the carnival kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I was very impressed with that. <laughs> and what did you think, Alistair? Uh, Rebecca's, I thought the idea about having almost a pack or a band detail about having the exposed bit around thing and a bit of the uh, peekaboo effect, I thought was, I, I give her credit for attempting that for what she actually had. Uh, I do agree with the judges that potentially, even though Patrick did point out you would be wearing a bikini under that, um, it depends how, you know, um, anyway, move on from that. Um, but literally, I thought that was what have you. I, Rafe's, I thought I liked the, the the actual pants. I liked the bag. I wasn't too hot about the actual top. <clears throat> I liked the bandana and what have you. I thought it was fun. Serena's, <clears throat> I really, really, really liked the concept of the top and what she had around her to use. Credit where it's due, those trousers around the crotch that seam underneath was absolutely beautiful and how she had turned those curtains to fall that way. I wasn't crazy about the waistband of it, but obviously the, the thing is that they didn't have enough time. But literally, um, I thought, I liked Serena's trousers. Um, I liked elements of all of them, um, but I, I'm not a fan of this challenge. No. It wasn't, it was an interesting one, but I have to say I did agree with, with the judges this time. So um, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to go on and talk about the, obviously, the last challenge and then our overall winner. But before then, I just very quickly want to go um, and remind everybody about the competitions. So last week we did have a competition for the Facebook and the YouTube channels that um, if you posted a comment... Um, and you guessed who, you know, you, you basically need to tell us who you thought was going to win. And you would win a copy of my book and 10 of the Fat Quarters from my new range of fabric, Birds of Paradise. And the Facebook winner is Christine Bell. So congratulations, Christine. And the YouTube winner is Karen Holton. So congratulations to both of you. If you can just um, send a direct message to um, wherever, you know, Facebook or the YouTube channel, somebody will be in touch with you to let you know how um, you can claim your prize or how we can send your prize to you. We still have the Create Your Own Fabric to announce, which we will be announcing a little bit later, just to keep you on ten hooks for a little bit more. That competition has been running for a couple of weeks where you could send us an image and your design will be turned into a fabric design. We have picked our winners and we'll be doing those in a little bit. But obviously we do have to have another competition. This is the last episode and so we've got a fabulous competition for you. This time we have teamed up with uh, Seams Beauty and we will be offering you a, a beautiful beauty gift, a gift um, pack with the Seams hand cream, which is a beautiful hand cream designed for sewers so that it soaks in um, and doesn't leave any residue when you are sewing, but gives that, your hands that little bit of extra because we know how, how dry, don't we, guys, our hands get when you're handling fabric. And that comes with, I believe, sanitizer and a nail file as well. So to be in with a chance to enter that, if you can like this post, uh, there'll be one for Facebook and one for YouTube, as usual. And tell us in the comments what you most enjoyed about the series, this series of Great British Sewing Bees, so that could be your favourite episode, your favourite outfit, whatever you like, and also tag a friend. Um, and they can tell us too, and they can join in and be in with a chance of winning. So now we get to the point where we are talking about who wins the Sewing Bee. So the final challenge, I'm just going to get my photographs, was the off-the-shoulder red carpet um, event. So it was a dress. It needed to be fitted beautifully because there's no straps to hold it up. And um, I'll just go through each of them very quickly and then we will sort of have a bun fight and decide whether we agreed or not. But that is Rebecca's. So that is Rebecca's um, dress. We have Rafe's in the red. And then we have Serena in the yellow. So let's uh, start with Alistair. So, did you agree with the winner? 
of, the, of, of Great British Sewing Bee, but also <laughs> Garment of the Week, which was this one. It doesn't show up very well on my camera being bright yellow. But what did you think of that? Well, I thought it was beautiful. More importantly, are we all going to the after party? Oh, we have we have our our little uh, little uh, snifter there. Because, oh. because you see, um, Patrick's just texted me, <laughs> and he says, "Sorry." Oh dear. <laughs> Check your Snapchat. <laughs> Be seeing him later, I think. <laughs> um, but yes, no, I thought Serena's was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. My only criticism of Serena's, I do agree with Esme. I do think the fit and flare, the proportion was slightly out. So I would have liked to have seen not only it fuller, but I would have actually have liked to it to have gone right to the floor. If you're going to do yeah. red carpet, do red carpet. Yes. Right. Yes, me. You're absolutely right. Perfect. Because the thing is, is that, you know, red carpet is red carpet. We're not, it's, it's, we're not going to a prom. It's it's not a dress that, you know, we might decide to wear a wedding at a later date. A red carpet dress is what it says on the tin. And So <clears> would you say that was a red carpet then, because it doesn't go to the floor? Uh, I wouldn't, no. <clears throat> That's pantomime, isn't it? <gasps> <laughs> I love you, Sam. I love you very much. <laughs> I think <clears throat> Serena's was the one that I felt was, in terms of um, the the silhouette and and for now, I thought was was very very nice. However, I did think now Rebecca's was absolutely beautiful in terms of now. I actually thought when she said she was going to use scuba, I just thought you wouldn't you would hardly ever see scuba walk down well you'd very seldom ever see it walk down a runway however you would very seldom even see it on a red carpet but i thought her execution of this was absolutely beautiful no it was best, when, wasn't it now when esme was going on about no for instance patrick was having a little bit of a moan about the um the pattern placement now i'm sorry but for a girl under those um what have you now all that needed was the fact that that was just because the model had walked down if she had just shoved up her boobs and just you know had a bit of a tweak that would have all have lined up perfectly and in a photo shoot that's what we would do you know it's never always going to do what have you or you would have some some under tacking underneath just to keep it in place yeah. or some double-sided tape or as we like to call it in the it's called um well it it to play tape we call it titty tape um, but literally, um, I just thought that was very, very elegant. It was very, very sympathetic. And I actually thought that for a shop bought pattern, I thought the fabric choice she used was very dramatic in terms of what the outcome was. When I, when they said what she was going to make, I was very, mm, I'm really not going to like this. But in actual fact, when she actually did it, I thought, oh, actually, I quite like that one. Rafe's, I thought he got all inside his head about, concepts and mm -hmm. da, 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 and blah 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 and i know that obviously everyone thought he was the one that was going to win but this is a, a sewing show that's critiquing your making up it's not critiquing you as a designer and the judges when they're saying about the fact that oh well you know this, this design and the the concept and the story behind it like i was saying um was in my sense, it was just like, yeah, but you can't actually put that one through. The hems weren't finished. It wasn't intentional. The fit, I didn't think, was there at all. No, um, it's badly shaped around the bodice. Exactly. Mm. It, that, that just wasn't there. In fact, those bows in the picture, those bows, that dress would have been a hundred times better if those bows had been moved three inches towards the centre front which is the line that runs down to me, here. So to me, it just, it just looked like a corset gone wrong, you know, and it looked like a 
just drawn up curtains. I just, it, it was it was pantomimish for me. It was a mess. Yeah, it, 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 from when he was saying he was going to be using lame. Now, lame, lame is a very, very light fabric. Now, when you're designing something like that, you need something that's going to really drop and hang. You need something that's going to um, get those um, scarf details at the bottom. You want something that's going to come, that's going to drop. And then when the model moves, then that's when the drama happens. Whereas the lame, as soon as she walked, it's sort of like, goofed and sort of like you know started to go what have you it just wasn't the look the look if you're static was fine but when the model moved which is what the red carpet is and what a runway is that was the wrong fabric choice I thought he could have used accents of it but I don't think he should have used it for the whole garment okay you were, you were you were just saying there about the judging because we have we have commented on that throughout this series of behind the scenes where they have been judging not necessarily on sewing and i think back to race um Raph's, uh, garment of the week when he made that gold dress and the threads in the darts were torn so that he could get it onto his model and that one garment of the week mm. because they said it's a very interesting pattern, but that was actually a shop bought pattern because yeah. I saw it online. Everyone was advertising it oh, the next wow. day. Mm. So it wasn't actually going, oh, it's very innovative and it's a great design. And but it wasn't actually, it was from a pattern and it wasn't well sewn. So I think they've been kind of um judging in two different ways. And week upon week, we see, you know, it might not that they're not always looking at the quality of the sewing. So I am delighted that Serena actually came through on this one because her sewing, as Esme said, she said that little bit about sprinkling with with fairy dust. And I must admit, I had a little, little uh, tearful moment myself when I was watching it. <laughs> I, I, I suddenly found myself quite overwhelmed. Uh. But, so Charlotte, you know, we watched them standing there, the three of them waiting to hear who had won. Can you can you remember? Can you tell us what that was like for you? How long did they make you stand there? Oh, long! Oh. You know how they do that thing on reality TV where they pretend it's a really big gap. It's actually yeah. four times as long as that. Wow! It's way longer because they have to get all the camera angles and everybody has to be filmed. And I was practically throwing up. My poor husband nearly fell over. <laughs> it was so stressful. It was like literally four minutes. It was awful. Oh, bless you. And then they tell like, you. Somebody say it. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. What did so you did you, what did you, you agree? Think? Sorry. <laughs> did you agree with, with what happened this week? Did you agree with the we with, with the winner, Serena? Yeah, I did. I did, because she's consistently throughout been an incredible sewer. And I think <laughs> Uh, my season was the first that had Esme in it. And I think that the judging changed then because Esme is mm -hmm. is very, she's like a, an art school background, basically a design background. And she mm -hmm. she brought that fashion side of things to the bee. Um, and before that it was May and she was very much more practical. And and so since then it has, there has been that sort of element of, you know, style and design and that kind of thing brought into it which has made it we were sort of shocked at the time because we we didn't know where we were because we were the first yeah. lot to have been judged like that and we were confused she does so we weren't used to being critiqued yeah she does come across that way doesn't she indeed Definitely. yeah i mean she's lovely she's absolutely the sweetest woman she's yeah. wonderful um but she is very art school critiquey kind of person because that's you know that's what she does and um yeah we were all a bit like Okay. And she will and she will judge you harshly if she doesn't like your colours, which Absolutely. we have Absolutely. we have we have commented on. Yeah, yeah, because it's all about personal choice, isn't it, Sam? Yeah. We've had this conversation yeah, yeah. where we said just because so the judge doesn't like the colour, they should be able to look because they should be able to see whether the colours might not be their choice, but if they work together and the outfit works, it's beautifully sewn. Um, yeah. I, I did get very, very, very tired of people just sticking enormous bows on everything. To <laughs> yeah, that, needs to, bow that needs to stop. It's enough now. <laughs> we do love yours, Alistair, though. Oh, yes, of course. We do. That's what St Martin's is like. 
for instance, because, um, you know, that's where I studied and that's, of, you know, for instance, Esme, um, I don't know if I've said this um, before, but for instance, Esme, um, one of our big course directors for the women's wear, I mean, we're going back a, a few, um, I don't even know if Willie Walters is still actually in the position she's in, um, but literally her, Willie Walters and a few others, they were, they were really big in the 70s. You know, they really did make, you know, they were made the cover of Vogue and a whole load of other things. And someone else told me that, you know, Esme, I mean, naughty girl, apparently she was topless on a motorcycle. No, she wasn't. That's, a, that's, that's, that's one of her claims to fame. Really? <laughs> she came off. I know. Well, I mean, I'm wasn't bad thinking about the it. epitome my, of modesty my, now. But my you know. opinion, for, for terms of winning, I think if Rebecca had chosen a different fabric, I think she would have smashed it with everybody because I thought her design was amazing. Don't you think, Sarah? I liked it, but I thought it, she played a bit safe for the yeah. final. I it didn't have a corset, it. which. Yeah, and I think it was beautifully made, but the others had boned corsets. That's so um, I think Rafe oh. lost it. He 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 put himself out of it by not finishing it. Yeah. Um, but I think that was Rebecca's. That's the best thing she's made. And it I rather liked thing. the I rather liked the fabric choices. I thought it it moved beautifully when the model wore it, and it skimmed beautifully. And as as me said, it it tucked in under the model's bottom, and it was just beautiful um and with the with the train on the back i think she should be very very proud of herself but i'm i, I think compared to these other two which they were looking for something that was going to make basically headlines on on the on the red carpet and you know when you've got i could see that on a magazine on the front page of a newspaper after a red carpet event. Yeah. And I'm not sure about that one quite so much, but again, still very innovative. And while this was beautiful, I think it was a little bit more traditional than they'd actually been looking for. Yeah, if you could imagine that in a different, like a velvet fabric, come on. Mm. Like purple, velvet, Oof, gorgeous. Would have been very amazing. wearable. The thing is, I think, um, to be honest, a lot of um, when people want to look at red carpet and they want to look at what have uh, all of that kind of um, drama and all of that kind of thing, they want to have this sort of like absolute, you know, knockout sort of like crazy design and what have you. But in actual fact, when you act, if you actually research the Oscars and research what actresses and, um, you know, <clears throat> people <clears throat> that wear to um, galas and things like that. You look very at classic. the dresses and very it's very, very classic. And I actually think Rebecca, she chose wisely. And yeah. in actual fact, she was very clever in her fabric choice because the thing is, is that with that fabric, I mean, she was a little bit naughty as well, because, for instance, for a fit challenge, you can make scuba as slightly a bit too tight but it's forgiving um so but the actual drama of that dress and i do agree with sam if you'd seen it in a different fabric mm -hmm. something that it, i mean we all know you you look at one print and then you look at three different colorways in that one print and it looks like a completely different print mm -hmm. yes um but i genuinely genuinely think i just i don't know i I do agree that Serena overall throughout the whole weeks should have won. Um, I'm glad in a way, and no disrespect to Rafe, but I just, there was a, a lot of things that were just not adding up and some of the unfinishing and things like that just weren't really mm -hmm. there. But then I thought that, that this sort of, if you like, people have been calling her the underdog Rebecca, but I think that she strategically thought this week, um, I know how I might, Pip myself to that top and she actually did her homework and she knew using that fabric and that design the drama she would have gotten for that i think if she'd actually went as bold as doing it completely in black oh yes i think they would have gone wow yes. exactly totally agree do you know what i know we can say if 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 can you imagine if she did that 
What do you think it was? We know that Serena was going to win, but I sometimes wonder if these things are fixed because all we kept getting is Serena, 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 Serena. Ah, but you see, I felt the other way. I felt it was always Rafi's. You know, mm. Raphael is. You know, the 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 great hope you know um the design elements and all of those things because uh, so because did he win garment of the week five times or something whereas serena only won it once mm. so really? you know yeah she kept winning the pattern challenges mm. but not garment of the week oh, wow. So, wow you know it was it, it, i kind of because when we did last week and we were talking about it and you were saying serena i, I wholeheartedly agreed with you but i felt that the way it had been edited and the way, you know, it it, it looks, it was actually going to be Raph. That was who we were going to see. But, you um, know what? but I was wrong. It's not, it's not where you start, is it? It's where you finish. I mean, Stuart, I don't know why he's never been called on this. He would have been a brilliant critique to come on to this show and talk as we are talking. And look how far his career's gone. And, I mean, mm. I just remember Stuart, excuse me, screwing up a lot on... Um, so in B. But and he was in stopped. he was in the first series when they hadn't actually decided it was going to be dressmaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. it was going to be general sewing. So he thought it was good because he's a very experienced quilter and had been, had been yes. quilt well known, well known oh, and was already true. he was writing for magazines and everything before sewing he, B. He actually you, to be honest, and him got me into into quilting. I mean, I've never been a quilter in my life and you kind of inspired me, Sarah, but so did he. And of course, I shouldn't mention it, I've got the machine that just cuts everything and does everything. And takes <laughs> the and everything. So I'm not good at maths. But yeah, I mean, but what I'm saying is look how far he's got. So it's yes. not where you finish. It's not, it's not where you start, it's where you finish, isn't it? It's where you end up at the end of the day with your sewing journey. It is. And Charlotte, you've managed to do that, haven't you? You have actually managed, because it's, not everybody who wins or takes part actually yeah. manages to make a career out of it, but but you have. Yeah, so I um, the desire to do that as well. I mean, out of the other people who were in my season, most of them like that. Well, Romana is a doctor. She wasn't going to give up being a doctor to have a career in sewing. Um, wow. Jade was a child, bless her. She was seventeen or eighteen. Oh wow! So she's gone on to continue to have a life um you know and and so on there were lots of people who just had other stuff that they were going to go back and do so for me I, I was looking for something different and I'd always wanted to sew and as a career so it was just it just gave me that opportunity it yeah so I, I think if you want to do it it's a good spring got a life sewing love because we never have a life <laughs> never have any bloody time Excuse no if that Monday was my first day off this month I haven't had a day off for two over two weeks. See, I know. Bless you. So, um, sewing. Because I think I think people think that you know. So Serena's won, and that's it. You know, that's that's going to be her career going forward. But obviously, she's a doctor, George. Yeah. She's, a, she's a medical student. Oh, it's the so... same with Claire from last season. She's mm. she's a doctor. She's not going to yeah, give up being a no. respiratory consultant in the middle of a. <laughs> respiratory <laughs> <pandemic>. <laughs> but so we can we can broadly agree then even though uh with the individual challenges and throughout the the 10 episodes that we have enjoyed we've come to the right place in the end um if you could have taken i'm going to drop something on you now if you could have taken somebody who was who was eliminated earlier on and brought them into the finals? Who would you like to have seen there? Perhaps if we could have had four oh. in the finals, who would you like to have seen? Adam. Adam. Yeah, I was Adam. Adam. <laughs> she was so sweet. Yeah. yeah, she loved Adam. So that was who I was going to say as well. So, um, Adam, if you're watching, we love you. We love you. <laughs> I don't think it's over for Adam. I think he's still going to go places. Mm. Well, he's yes, he's waiting for the cruise ships to come back on and then he can get on there with a sewing machine. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> run a couple of, perhaps run a couple of sewing classes on, sure. the, on the cruise. <laughs> those, those sewing cruises, he should totally do that now. I tell you, they, they've been missing a trick, those, those um, cruise organisers, if they don't. 
<laughs> so, um, right. Now, I do have one more announcement to make. I'm just going to do this for a moment. I know. We're in the Caribbean. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> the Show us your pants again, Alistair. <laughs> oh, no, I, can't, I can't show you those again. Honestly, it is baking. <laughs> and I've got two... Uh, I've got two reindeers on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, oh, so I love your composure. I, I, I love for my art stuff. I was going to say I love your commitment, Alistair, and um, for 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 bringing the the bants and lols along with you. <laughs> <laughs> But we have been running a competition for the last couple of weeks. So not only have we got Serena as a winner, but we also, um, I'm really delighted to announce the winners for the fabric design competition that we have been running um, or that Create and Craft have been running, running. And you had the opportunity to send us some images which will be turned into fabric um, and it will be sold on Create and Craft. So you'll see your own fabric as a piece of fabric which is amazing. And um, there's also a sewing bundle worth £250, including a £100 voucher to spend on Creating Craft on the channel. And we actually have three winners um, because we couldn't decide. So um, and rather than get together with Esme and have a fight, because I'm convinced I would lose, um, especially with that bow. <laughs> 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 We actually have three winners. I'm going to announce those winners now. So these are not, these are three first places. It's not first, second, and third. Okay. So we have um, Amelia Wong with Kaleidoscope. We have Rose Harvey with Cyan. And um, I do apologize for the pronunciation of this one, but I don't actually know how you pronounce it. But we think it's Efni Pattern with garden bugs. So somebody will be in touch with you over the next few days to have a conversation with you guys about your winning entries for the fabric competition. So I'd just like to uh, very quickly say thank you so much to um, Alistair and Samantha and the lovely Charlotte and all the other guests that we have had throughout these episodes. We have had an absolute blast coming and talking to you every week. And I think we're all a little bit sad, aren't we, that this is this is the end of it. But we are having a little <laughs> after show after show little party. Um, we will allow Esme to take her bow off. Um, by then before she passes out in the heat but um cheers to everybody thank you for joining cheers. us thank you for watching yay thank you for watching Bye. and we hope to see you all again soon so keep sewing um and just have fun um thank you very much we'll see you soon bye bye, bye. <laughs>